Parvati is just only woman. She wants to have a baby. Using her tantric power, she made the shape of a baby and breathed life into it. And Shiva lands up from somewhere. With a flick of his sword, he took off the boy's head and went to see Parvati. Because he got a head which was not human, he was supremely brilliant. So we called him Vigneshwara, he removed all the Vignas because his intelligence is of that level. Manasarovar is uh, significant because one of the things that happened was Ganapati was born here. So he's not elephant-headed, he's Ganapati. Gana means the Ganas who were Shiva's companions. Generally, they are described as distorted and demented human beings, beings, not human beings. They did not have human form, they had strange forms and they had limbs which did not have bones, a boneless limbs they had all the time with him. Others came and went, but they were always there. So, when uh, one of these outings that Shiva went, so once he went away and after eleven, twelve years he came back. Parvati sitting here on the banks of this lake, I want you to imagine, you are the just only woman sitting on the banks of Manasarovar Lake, nothing here. She wants to have a baby. She is unable to have a baby because Shiva's seed is not human. So, it's clear that she cannot have a baby with him. So one day, she smeared herself with sandal paste head to toe, waited for a period of time, then slowly peeled off all the sandal paste. When you do this, a certain amount of your skin or your cells will come away. Making use of this, using her tantric power, she made the shape of a baby and breathed life into it. A nice little boy came and she was very happy in the company of this boy. And he grew up, grew up, just the two of them, nobody. And Shiva lands up from somewhere. Nobody knows where he goes. Him and his friends land up. Well, all in a and eh? happy, come to see his wife. <laughs> He's that kind. And Parvati wants to have bath. So she set up a small barrier and asked the boy to watch out, that nobody comes this way. So the boy took this duty as a very… He's very proud to guard his mother. Shiva and his friends landed up. So he wants to see his wife, he's coming that way. And the boy stopped him and questioned him, who are you? She was, you asking me who are you? With a flick of his sword, he took off the boy's head and went to see Parvati. The wife saw blood on his sword and she screamed. She said, you have to bring him back to life. He said, that's not possible. Now if he wants to have his wife, he has to bring this boy back to life. So he looked around and the leader of the Ghana, he asked him what? He said, okay. So he lopped off his head and put it on the boy's head. So he became a Ganapati, the chief of the Ganas. Ganesh Chaturthi marks the rebirth of Ganesha, celebrated across India during the months of August and September. The festival begins with the creation of Ganesha idols from unburnt clay, which are worshipped with great devotion. Some idols can reach immense sizes. Towering over a hundred feet tall, after a period ranging from one week to fifteen days, depending on the region, these idols are immersed in lakes or oceans, symbolizing the dissolution of the deity. During the festival, Ganesha becomes the center of life. For those days, everything revolves around him. What he eats, likes and represents becomes the focus of devotees' lives. Yet, after the immersion, Ganesha is dissolved, signaling an end to the festival. This tradition reflects the unique understanding in Indian culture that God is a creation of human consciousness. Beyond the grand celebrations and colorful ritual, Ganesh Chaturthi is also a time for deep spiritual reflection. Devotees seek Ganesha's blessing for prosperity and help in overcoming personal challenges. The festival unites people from all walks of life in worship and celebration, serving as a reminder that, like the Ganesha idol, the mind is a creation of consciousness and can be mastered. He is the king or the leader or the chief of Ghanas. Because he got a head which was not human, he was supremely brilliant. Because of this extreme sense of intelligence, he did not allow anything to be an obstacle in his life. Every obstacle in life can be cleared if you have the needed intelligence, isn't it? So this is what he proved. So we called him Vigneshwara, he removed all the Vignas because his intelligence is of that level. If you do not know about writing his scriptures, he told uh, Vyasa, your dictation should be non-stop. If you stop, I'm going to drop the pen and go away because I'll get bored with you. This is the level of intelligence. Ganesh Chaturthi means not to boost your belly, but to boost your brain because he's known for his brain, not for his belly. But today, to our children, we have said, we have made it clear, 
he is known for his big belly, not for his big brain. He was essentially known for his big brain. So, Ganesh Chaturthi should be about boosting the brain, not the belly, isn't it? Symbolically, the festival illustrates the power of imagination and intellect. Just as the Ganesha idol is eventually emerged and dissolved, it highlights the importance of controlling and mastering one's mind and imagination. The essence of Ganesh Chaturthi is to remind us that our consciousness shapes our intellect and experiences, not the other way around. Managing one's imagination and intellect is crucial for personal growth and balance. We wish you and your family a very happy Ganesh Chaturthi.